Hello and welcome. This is Jennifer McGuire, and I am so very thankful you're here. I'm very excited about today's video because not only do I get to play with a new color of Tim Holtz Distress Ink, but I also have a fun and easy magical technique for you. I'll start the video by looking at this new color of Distress Ink, and we will compare it to other colors that already exist. And then we will do the really cool magic die cutting distress ink technique. This is something that I really had fun playing with and is very, very easy to do. Okay, before we get started with the technique, let's look at the newest color in the distress ink family from Tim Holtz. I'm excited to introduce Prize Ribbon, a beautiful true blue color. Now this is available in distress ink and distress oxide ink, and there are reinkers available for both. If you are new to the Distress Ink world, I will link to a video up here on the top right that talks more about the difference between the traditional Distress Ink on the left and the Distress Oxide Ink on the right. Now there are also a few other products in the Distress family that come in this new color as they do all the colors. On the left we have the Distress Spray Stain and on the right we have the Distress Oxide Spray and these are available in the new color also. And then finally, there is the Distress Paint and the Distress Embossing Glaze, both available in this new color. Let's take a look at this color and how it compares to other blues that are already in the Distress Ink family. These are my ink swatches that I have for all of my inks. I have a free download over on my blog. I will provide a link below where you can download and cut your own ink swatches to make these. And it has been updated with the new color. So these are all the Distress Inks in the blue family. You can see Prize Ribbon, it's up there on the top row, and it is a true blue. Now you can see next to Blueprint Sketch, it is more of a blue, whereas Blueprint Sketch is a little bit more of a purple. It's kind of hard to see in the video, but you definitely have a more true blue color with the Prize Ribbon. One of the nice things about the prize ribbon is it works well with a lot of the other blues. You can see it looks great with Chip Sapphire, but it also works well with Salty Ocean or Mermaid Lagoon. And you'll see a few different options of all of that today. Now let's look at the Distress Oxide colors. I know some people have Distress Ink and some have Oxide Ink, so I wanted to be sure to show both. So the new prize ribbon color is in the top row center. You can see how it is a true blue compared to the others. And when you compare it to Blueprint Sketch, which I think is its closest match, the Blueprint Sketch is a little more indigo or purpley and much brighter. The uh, prize ribbon is definitely a true blue, kind of like a light navy, just gorgeous. And it really does match up with other inks quite well. So there is a little bit of a color comparison. Now let's do a fun magic die cut distress ink technique using the new prize ribbon color along with other colors of distress ink. I have lots of examples to share with you, each with a different spin on it. Let's start with this one here. You can see the magic inking technique on that blue background. I'm going to actually start this by creating that jellyfish die cut and our hello sentiment. That will help with the placement of our technique. So this is the Memory Box Graceful Jellyfish Die Set. You can see it there on the left. It actually will create two jellyfish, but I glued all of the pieces together for a layered look. I die cut some pieces from holographic cardstock, some from white glitter cardstock, and some from plain white cardstock. And check out this beautiful layered look. I love the sparkle and the shine on this. Using white cardstock, white glitter cardstock, and holographic cardstock is a great way to make something that will match any color background. For a sentiment, I'm using the older Birch Press Big Lingo Hello die set. I've used this many times. There are two dies. One cuts the outline with the letters in the center, and the other cr cuts a solid hello. So you can use these together or separately. I'm actually using the solid hello, and then the letters from the inside of the outline hello. So I cut the solid hello from white cardstock, and now I'm gluing the holographic inside letters on top of it. You could use the outline too if you wanted. I decided to go with this option. Now that I have my two large die cut elements ready, the jellyfish and the hello, we can plan our card design. I wanted a diagonal inked piece at the top. So I have a piece of white cardstock here, and I just have a blue note card back there just to get the placement right. I want to have my jellyfish about there and my hello down there. So I'm getting my white card stuck at the right position and angle on that blue note card. I'll hold them together, flip it over, 
and trace around the note card. Now I can cut along these traced lines and I know I have the white piece that we can ink up however we want and it'll fit nicely at the top of the note card with room for the hello behind it and the jellyfish at the top. Now to ink these, I'm using Distress Ink. You could use Oxide if you prefer, but I thought I would use the traditional since that's what most people have. I'm first putting down the new prize ribbon color. Look how gorgeous that is. I went direct to paper at the bottom. For this technique, the more ink you put down, the better the results. And then I did a little blending with an ink blending tool. Now I'm going direct to paper on the other side with peacock feathers. And then I'll use my blending tool to blend in the area there in the middle. Again, put down as much ink as you can. It would take a long time to put down this much ink if you just used an ink blending tool on the whole thing. Direct to paper is best. I did decide to go and put a little bit of Mermaid Lagoon ink right there in the center just to get a heavier mount there too. You don't want any of that white showing through. So don't worry too much also about blending wonderfully. It really doesn't matter. Distress inks dry and are very forgiving, and this technique is also very forgiving. I also put a little chip sapphire along the bottom just for a darker edge. Now that we have our distress ink background ready, let's get our die cuts that we need so we can do this magic inking technique. Any die cuts would work, but today I'm going for ocean theme. I love the ocean and I know many people who also love the ocean, so I can send them these cards. This is the coral and uh, kelp ribbon die set. This will be great for this background technique. Here are other few options that you could use and I'll use a few of them today too. We have the memory box kelp collage dies on the left and I've used that in a previous video that I'll link to on the top right. In the middle we have the bubble coral collage dies and on the right we have the deep water collage dies. I'm a big fan of window designs like these because they are great for inky techniques. Also, these each come with a different type of coral or kelp that you could use separately. And each of these windows is slightly smaller than the other, so you can actually stack them to get a really cool look. But I'll be using them separately today in different ways. And next, a really awesome die from Memory Box called School of Fish. This cuts lots of different fish in different styles and different sizes. So I'll use this multiple times today. I love that set. Okay, now it's time for the fun magic inking technique with die cuts. For this, you'll need any die cut machine. I have my Platinum 6. And we're going to put our inked piece onto our die cutting plates. Do this as you would if you were doing any kind of die cutting with a wafer thin die. We're just not gonna use a die with it. So I have my platform and a die cutting plate, one of the clear cutting plates, and then my inked background on top. Now I have a bunch of die cut white cardstock pieces that I created using the dies I just showed you. Just plain white cardstock here. I'm spraying these white cardstock pieces generously with water. I'm using my Tim Holtz sprayer. You want this to kind of be covered with water, not like pooled up with water, but just soak up a good amount of water. That jellyfish on my inked background is just there as a placeholder. I am not spraying that. But all these pieces on my black work surface, I sprayed with water. Now I'm lifting those wet die cuts and laying them carefully on my inked background. Don't move it once you've laid it down in place. Once it's there, leave it there. That jellyfish again is just there as a placeholder. I didn't want to put anything in that area so the focus could be on that jellyfish when we add it later. But all of these other die cuts I'm laying on the surface are wet with water. So what's happening here is Distress Ink reacts with water. So when you lay the white die, or I'm sorry, the wet die cut on top of it, and when we add pressure, what will happen is the Distress Ink will react and it'll soften in that area. So once I have all of my wet die cuts in place, I'll put the other clear cutting plate on top and run it back and forth through the die cut machine. So I'm using my die cut machine as if I were using a piece of cardstock and a wafer thin die, but I'm not die cutting here, there's no die. I'm simply applying pressure over it. So I go back and forth a few times, kind of slowly, and then I take it out and I will want to heat set this a little bit before I try to remove the die cuts. If I try to remove the die cuts while they're wet, they may tear, and I wanna be able to reuse those. 
So by heat setting it, it'll start to dry and it won't tear. You'll know it's ready to peel off when the corners of the die cuts kind of curl up on their own. So now I can take those die cuts off and look at their beautiful inked color. And then you take your heat gun again to your inked background and watch, it's like magic. All of those areas the wet die cut sat now are lighter. It's such a beautiful kind of ghost-like result. You could use a background die for this. You could use um, any die cuts you want for this. And I'll demonstrate more later. Now that our background is done, let's create the note card. This is the Memory Box 3D Waves Embossing Folder. I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card here, and I'm putting half of it in there so we can have an embossed front to our note card. For this particular note card, I like to use a folded cardstock shim, a metal shim, and that's it. I put the embossing folder on top and run it back and forth through. You'll just need to experiment with your die cut machine or check the manufacturer's website on what sandwich is best for that particular embossing folder. Okay, now we can assemble everything. This is my inked background. Remember, it's cut at an angle. I wanted it to stand up on our card, have dimension behind it. So I have some white cardstock here that I'm gluing to the back of it, and then I'll cut at an angle along the bottom. I'm gluing three pieces of white cardstock back there. This is inexpensive white cardstock, and it just allows me to build dimension that will hold up through the mail. You would have to use a lot of foam tape here, and it really wouldn't hold up well. Okay, so now I'm gonna glue this on the front of our embossed note card. And this piece I did cut to be a little bit smaller, so there's a white trim along the top. Okay, so now we can add our sentiment. This is that hello that I showed you before, made from white cardstock and holographic cardstock. And I glued that right below our inked piece. Then I glued our little jellyfish right onto the inked piece. Now remember those white die cuts that we sprayed with water and then laid on our distress ink background, ran it through the die cut machine and peeled them off? Well, they came out blue. Look how beautiful they are, like a light blue color. Well, I'm cutting those into smaller pieces and I'll glue them right onto our background just for some added dimension and interest. Remember, you can take any large die cut and trim it down a bit. Here I took some coral die cuts and made them smaller so that I could still see my magic background. The fun thing is our background is nice and bold, but these die cuts that were white that we pressed on top turn out to be soft, but of the same color. So it really creates um, this fun, like another dimension to our background. It really is interesting how it all comes together nicely. I also wanted some soft blue fish to put on our background. So here in my die cut machine, I have a piece of inked cardstock using the same colors of Distress Ink from before. I'm spraying some white cardstock fish here from that school of fish dye and laying those onto our inked background. So these die cut pieces are wet. I'll then put the cutting plate on top and run it back and forth as if I were just using cardstock and a die. You'll see there are already some magical looking fish on our background. That's because I did this technique before to color some larger fish die cuts that I ended up not using. So this is also a fun way to add soft color to your die cuts. And then we have this beautiful background, like a sea of fish there that I can use on another card. Now I didn't end up using this background today, but I do have it on hand for a future card. And now I have these little fish that are softly inked that look great against our boldly inked background. I also wanted to add a stamp set in the inside of the card, so I'm using the Poppy Stamps Whittle Sea Life Sentiment Set. Lots of great sentiments in here, and I'll use them throughout this video. Well, I had stamped one of these inside of my note card, and I kind of messed it up. I didn't like how I stamped it. Instead of getting a new note card, I'm instead cutting a piece of white cardstock to be about four by five and a quarter inches. I stamped the sentiment on that, which looked much better, and now I'm gluing it inside my note card. This does give it a nice finished look on the inside, makes my note card stronger, and nobody will ever know I had messed up behind it. So here's a look at our completed card. I did also add some Trinity Stamps bubbles, their little clear iridescent gemstones, which really pick up the color behind it very nicely. I also left all the little tentacle thingies on the gelfish to kind of hang there. I thought that really added to the three-dimensional look, but they will flatten nicely when I put them in the envelope. 
You can see the embossing texture on the back of the note card, the white note card, and also the shine that we get from our holographic cardstock and white glitter cardstock. So this is just one example of using small die cuts to create a magic inked background using distress inks. Now I did do another that's very similar. I'm not gonna go through the whole process because it's exactly like we just did. But I wanted to show you a trick that I did when I finished it off. See those tiny little circles? Those are sparkle white glitter circles. Instead of using gemstones, if you want something that's flat, you can make your own faux gemstones. I have this Hero Arts Circle Confetti background die. It just cuts a bunch of little tiny dots, and I have a piece of white glitter cardstock. Well, I die cut that piece from the background, and I end up with all these tiny dots, and I'm gluing those onto my card. If I wanted to make them even look more like gemstones, I could put a dot of glossy accents on the top of each, but this is nice because it gives some sparkle and detail to our card without too much bulk. Now this Hero Arts Confetti background die is perfect for these tiny circles, but there are lots of dies that create little circles or little hearts or little stars you can add to your card. Now this card, I did the magic inking technique just like the last one. I did the same colors of Distress Ink, I did the same wet die cuts that I laid on top for the magic part, and I added some coral and fish, all from white cardstock or white glitter cardstock. I also added a thin strip of holographic cardstock right along the bottom for a nice finished edge, and I stamped a sentiment from that Poppy Stamps sentiment set. So I used a lot of the same products, just a different card design. Okay, let's move on to another example. In this case, I'm using a more bold background die for the magic inking technique. We'll do intricate die cuts later. You can see the sun rays in the water. That's the magic inking part. So for the frame on this card, I'm using the Memory Box Kelp Collage dies. This is one I showed you earlier. And I'm cutting it from white cardstock. Again, I like window dies like this because you can actually create windows on your cards. You can create shaker windows, or you can just create a focal point for a bold background like I'm doing here. Okay, so now for the Magic Inking Technique, I have a Lawn Fawn Sunray Backdrop die. This creates a four and quarter by five and a half inch panel and it has faux stitching. But I'm actually cutting the frame off of it because I just need the rays for this. I could have left the frame on, but at this point, this is kind of where my head was going, so I trimmed these off. Now that inked background there is just inked on white cardstock. That is a picked raspberry, seedless preserves, and also prize ribbon, the new blue color. I have it in my die cut machine, and I'm spraying our white die cut, the Sunray one, pretty generously with water. Again, you don't want it to puddle on the die cut. You can dab it off if you have a little too much, but you want it to be pretty soaked. Now I'm gonna lay this onto our inked cardstock and run it back and forth through. You may want to experiment with how much water your die cuts need with this technique. I found if it was pretty saturated, it was good. You just didn't want puddles of water on top of the die cut. Once again, I'm heating this a little bit. Once the die cut, the white die cut kind of curls up, I know it's ready to remove from our background. And what's cool is our white die cut will have soft ink on it. We can save that for another project. And then this inked background will now be lighter wherever that die cut was. Such a fun way to create two pieces at once. I'll save the lighter piece for later. Now we have this fun sunray look through our little ocean window. I'm putting glue on the back of that window. I did do two additional white window die cuts that I glued behind it. So this will have some stacked dimension to it. That's something you don't need to do on your card, but I do find it really helps add those little shadows that make your card pop. So I'll glue that on top and then I can trim off any excess hanging off. I thought I would add this to a holographic note card. I just use holographic cardstock and I cut it into a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding note card. And the nice thing is, is the core of it is white. So it's white on the inside. I'm also matting our white frame here with white glitter cardstock. This is from Simon Says Stamp. It's my favorite white glitter cardstock. But since only the outside edge will be showing, I'm gonna use that space in the middle. So I'm die cutting a bunch of fish and some kelp from it. No one will ever see we die cut that center out because watch, when I glue my frame on top of this, all you're gonna see is that outside edge. 
So don't let that inside edge, inside area go to waste. From it, I was able to die cut a bunch of little fish and kelp. Okay, now for this fish, I thought this was the cutest fish. It's from that school of fish dye I showed you earlier. I thought I would cut him into pieces and glue them together to make them look like a layered die set, but it's a single die. So I cut the, uh, the whole fish from holographic cardstock. On top of it, I'm gluing parts of the fin that I trimmed out from white glitter cardstock. So I put a little bit there. I'm putting some on the bottom fin here and some on the top fin. So it's holographic cardstock with little areas of white glitter cardstock on top. Then I will cut the body out from white cardstock and glue that right to the body of the fish. So I'm kind of piecing together to create a fish that has holographic cardstock, white glitter cardstock, and white cardstock. It's hard to see in the video, but this really captures the light a lot in real life. Adds to the dimension, and that sparkle is so much more interesting than a plain white die cut. I could have done colors here, but I want my color focus to be the backdrop. That's why I'm focusing today on white, holographic, and white glitter cardstocks. Now here I have some glitter cardstock kelp that remember we cut from the center of our mat piece. And I'm just tucking those into our window frame here, just adding more interest and a little bit of sparkle. I also use some holographic cardstock to cut some coral, which again, I'm giving a haircut to make a bit smaller. And I'll tuck a few of those places or pieces here and there in our window frame. I could have left it simple, you definitely could if you want, but I feel like adding these little bits and pieces of these specialty cardstocks really makes it shine. Next I have a sentiment from the poppy stamp set I showed you earlier. It's a long sentiment, so I cut the words apart so I could stack it and it'll better fit in the window we have here. So you can see my two pieces of the stamp there. I'm picking the bottom one first and I'll stamp only the bottom one. I'm using my anti-static powder tool first and then stamping the sentiment with Versamark ink. Now the reason I did the two parts of the sentiment separately is that way I could get the words closer together. They're stacked closer together that way. It's hard to get them close together when you have both stamps on there at once. I then added white embossing powder and heat set it. Now part of my sentiment didn't heat set well, so I'm cheating and using my white gel pen to fill it in. These are the new Arteza white gel pens, which I am crazy about. I think they're fantastic, and they're great for fixing white embossing that doesn't emboss perfectly. Now I'm using my Gina Connect liquid adhesive to glue this entire piece onto our holographic note card. I like using Gina K Connect because it's strong, quick to apply, and is a great for making sure that something will stay put, especially on this glossy cardstock. Now I did want to add a panel to the inside like before. The reason I'm adding a panel to the inside of this is the holographic cardstock isn't as super thick as the super thick cardstock I normally use for a card base. So it gives it a little bit more strength so that it'll stand up nicely and you won't have a floppy card. I finished off the card by adding a few Trinity Stamps bubble bath gems. Those are like a silvery holographic and really match with everything, especially the holographic cardstock. There you can see the magic inking technique in the background where we use the ray dye to create that magical looking ray going through the water. Now this is a very subtle look with that magic inking. I will give you some tips for intensifying that look later on. I think sometimes subtle is best, especially when it's just a backdrop on a card. Okay, time for our next example. In this case, I'm using a very intricate background die to show you that you can even do this technique with great detailed dies. So this is the Birch Press Waves Layered Die Set. There are three background dies in it. You can die cut these and layer them to create a really cool layered wave background. I've used this in a video before. I will link to it in the top right corner. But today I'm only using one of the dies, the one that has very intricate waves. I have a piece of inked white cardstock. This is Blueprint Sketch, Mermaid Lagoon, and Peacock Feathers. Now I also have a white cardstock die cut, the very intricate die cut, beautiful. I'm spraying it generously with water until it's saturated. I will then pick up that die cut and lay it right onto our inked background. Wherever you lay it, you need to leave it there because if you move it, it messes up the technique. So watch, I'm just gonna lay this down, it's crooked, it doesn't matter one bit. 
I will then put the other cutting plate on top and run it back and forth. Again, there's no cutting going on here. It's just applying even pressure to press, press that wet die cut into the inked background. I will then heat set it until the die cut, the white die cut starts to curl and peel it off. Now I have this beautiful soft ink die cut and our bold ink background watch. When you heat set it, it's like magic. That light pattern starts to appear and it's just beautiful. It's almost velvety looking wherever the die cut, the wet die cut touched our inked background. So beautiful. Now I first thought I wanted to use the Simon Says Stamp Border Waves die along the top of this. So I cut that border waves die, and once I did, I decided those waves were a little too pronounced for the card I was going for. So I changed my mind, which happens a lot, and I moved to the Simon Says Stamp Scallop Border Die Set, and instead decided to go just for a simple scallop along the top. So you can look at any of your scallop or cloud dies. A lot of those border dies work great for waves too. Next, let's create the scene that goes at the top of our card. First, I created a sailboat using this memory box die set. It has two sailboats. I'll be using the larger of the two sailboats. And I will create it out of holographic cardstock and blue glitter cardstock. Everything else in our sky will be cut from white cardstock. I use the sun from the Newton's Nook Sky Scene Builder die set. This is a great die set. Highly recommend it. It does faux stitching too. For clouds, I decided to use this Waffle Flower Outline Cloud die. I just thought it was really cool because it uh, cuts an outline cluster of clouds, but I'm only using the inside pieces. And see how you get a bunch of clouds in different sizes. So I cut a bunch of clouds and sun and I stacked them so they were too thick. So I glued two die cuts of the same size together, everything from white cardstock. I then glued it to the top of our note card and trimmed off the excess. So by using white die cuts on a white background, it's very subtle. It doesn't distract from everything else on the card. I added our sailboat that I made from holographic cardstock and a light blue glitter paper. There's our beautiful inked background, that magic inking technique. And I also white heat embossed the sentiment directly on it from that Poppy Stamps sentiment set. I also added some little birds in the sky, tiny black die cut birds from the Hero Arts Cloudy Skies die set. So by doing stacked white die cuts on the sky, it's not too distracting, but it stands out in real life. Oh, and I also added a small heart die cut to the sailboat for a pop of color. Next, let's do another example with the same background die, but I'm going to step up the technique by adding some sparkle to the magic inking. And this also makes it stand out a bit more if you want something that's not as subtle. Oh, and another bonus of this version of this technique is you end up with two backgrounds. So this time I started with two pieces of white cardstock already inked with Distress Ink. The one on the desk here is inked with prized ribbon and uh, seedless preserves. The one on my die cut machine is seedless preserves and tumbled glass. Again, I put down that ink very heavily onto white cardstock. Now I have a white die cut laying on top of that one inked background on our desk. Now you could spray this with any kind of shimmery water. One way is to mix perfect pearls with water in a spray bottle. I'll link to a video that talks more about how to make that mix up here on the top right. That's one option. But what I decided to use today is Sukuneko Shimmer Spritz. This is a very shimmery spray that is clear but adds tons of sparkle. So instead of spraying this white die cut with water, I'm spraying it with this shimmer spray. And the reason I put an inked piece of cardstock behind it was so that it wouldn't all go to waste, all that extra spray. So you can use that background for another card. Okay, so now I have a saturated white die cut here. It's got lots of that sparkly spray on it. I'm gonna flip it over and lay it right onto our inked background on the die cut machine. Again, white cardstock inked heavily with Distress Ink. I will now put the other die cut plate on top and run that back and forth. And look at that piece laying on my desk there. That piece will also be sparkly with the pattern. It'll just look a bit different. It'll have a lot of sparkle. When you heat set it, look how beautiful that is too. So now I have this piece that I can use for another card. It'll even be better when it's completely dry. I don't use that piece in today's video, but keep in mind I have that for another card. 
And now this one, I can heat set it. And what happens is you get the magic inking look where you get that subtle pattern on the background. But this time, look at the sparkle in it. It looks so sparkly in real life. Now to finish this off, I use the scallop border die along the top and I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. I'm using the memory box whale family dies. It's right there in the center. There's a big whale and a small whale. I'm cutting those both from holographic cardstock so they stand out. I thought it'd be fun if the big whale had a spray of water coming out the top. So I actually used white glitter cardstock and all of the little tentacles from our jellyfish. I had those die cuts out, seemed to work fine. I just cut little tentacles off and glued it so it looks like it's shooting out of the whale. So I glued a big whale and a small whale onto our card. Now notice some of the water spray coming up from the whale is sticking off the card. I didn't want to cut that off, so I'm going to make a custom envelope. This is a five by seven envelope, and I'm cutting a little bit off of each side so I can make it smaller and also make it a good fit for our odd size card. So this card was four and a quarter by five and a half inches, but I, my little pieces are sticking out, off about a half inch off the top, so I need a taller card. So I cut the sides off this five by seven, and then I will reseal the sides of the envelope. This will give me a card that will better, or an envelope that will better fit our card. Whenever I do envelopes like this, I do check it with the post office to make sure it will go through okay. Usually if it's a non-square envelope, you are okay, but you might wanna check just to be safe. So now I have an envelope that works great for my card. Now on this card, I also stamped waving hello from that Poppy Stamp Sentiment stamp set. And I did add little uh, birds to the sky die cut from black cardstock. There you can see the shimmer of that magic inking technique. Really fun to do. And the shimmer's more obvious if you use a more solid die cut. This is a pretty intricate die cut that I used for this background, but it still has lots of shine to it. Now I really like that background, so I thought I'd do another card using the same technique, exact same thing. So I used the same wave die cut, cut from white cardstock and I sprayed it once again very generously with that shimmer spritz. This time I put even more on it. It was very wet. I then laid that wet die cut onto an inked background. That inked background was created with white cardstock, chip sapphire ink, prize ribbon, and tumbled glass. I then ran that through my die cut machine for some pressure and look at that sparkle background. It's got a little texture to it. It's got a velvety look to it. Super cool. Now for that flamingo, I used the ink to paper Feathered Friends 12 die set. I love these dies. Very simple layering dies. I just cut mine from white cardstock and added color with Copic markers. For sentiment, I used this older uh, My Favorite Things Flamazing stamp set. I think it's discontinued, but I used a sentiment from that and I thought it was perfect with this flamingo. So there you have it, a fun technique to use with distress inks or distress oxide inks, and a closer look at that prize ribbon color that's been added to the distress ink family. If you're interested in any of the different products I showed today, they are linked below in my YouTube description. But keep in mind, this technique works great with any die cuts you may already have. If you are interested in other techniques similar to this, they're linked here in the middle. And you can go to my blog by clicking on the top right where you can save cards for future reference. Thanks for watching. I always appreciate it. Have a good week.